Hello, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra deck guide. It's patch 1.6. I'm going to be talking about deep sea monsters today. And at the moment, it's going to be finding a pretty good home as a tier 2 deck. I think it has a really good matchup spread right now. It struggles against Karma Ezreal, which is not as popular. And Will of Ionia has... Will of Ionia, sorry, has been nerfed. But still, if you were to face Karma Ezreal over and over, I would not recommend playing this deck. But outside of that, we can eat some mid-range decks. We can beat up an uh, aggro decks, especially the way we've catered our deck. And then you should be able to have a good time. I can even recommend that you climb with this deck. I'm going to talk about a few cards in particular today that I think kind of stand out. Fading Memories, shoutouts to Swim for the concept. This basically allows us to have a much stronger early game. And we can utilize this in sense in the same sense that we do as Jettison, right? As, as Swim says. Basically, you can use your Fading Memories on your Thorning Toad, your Dead Bloom Wanderers, even Jaw Hunters to have some pretty sick early game. We also run three Mist Call, which can kind of combo with Fading Memories too. This all helps to play uh, Malkai early and really level up Malkai super, super fast. You'll see an example in a game that we have very shortly. So I really like Fading Memories in replacement of Jettison. This can provide us so much more value. And that's kind of what I want this specific list to be doing. Huge amount of value and just like, just absolutely dumping your opponent towards the end. I also do run one atrocity for similar reasons where I'm basically just looking to add value in my opponent. If I don't toss the atrocity, that's a pretty good win con. Most lists will run two. I'm just running one because, uh, as I said, I have a certain way of playing the deck. And that's just my preference. But there's plenty of different lists out there. If you think mine's suboptimal, please just go ahead and uh, just go on Mobilytics or Google the decks. You'll find plenty of different lists. You might also wonder why I'm only running two Nautilus. That's because in most matchups where Nautilus is really good, we just need to draw one of it. Also, Nautilus can brick a hand early. And we don't really want to brick. I want this deck to be as smooth as possible and having three Nautilus sometimes can clunk a hand and get some bad draws. In replacement of the Nautilus, I am running one Riptide to help us in those matchups where we should be really strong against already, which doesn't really matter too much about the three Nautilus. This also can be useful in the late game if we do have Nautilus in the field. But, you know, I think it just feels smooths out the deck a little bit where it struggled before. And as I said, this variant is all about the early game. In saying that too, in terms of the value, I'm going to be running Shipwreck Hoarder instead of Terror Tides. I think this card low-key is pretty crazy and the treasures are a lot of fun. I don't think Terror Tides right now is too relevant and it costs one extra mana. A Devourer of the Depths is going to be pretty much an auto-include. The ability to obliterate your opponent's units is very rare and we haven't got much removal. So this works as good removal and uh, towards the end of the game it's just a pretty insane power tech. So I'm going to be running a variant that is 3 Grasp of the Undying and 3 Within Whales as there's a fair bit of aggro running around and I want to guarantee that I slap them every single time. I'm also just going to be running 2 Abyssal Eye because this card is kind of slow but it has a good spot in this deck. I like 2 copies of it but I don't think I'd go any further than that. I'm going to be running a 2 Salvage in this list as well for going uh, deep very quickly and keeping the gas going. Um, some lists won't run Salvage. I don't mind it, I think it works, especially with how fast we want to go deep. And because we only run two Nautilus, uh, there's more of a reason to be tossing more cards and just finding a Nautilus sooner. Three Maokai for this list. Some versions will run two with a Thresh. I like three Maokai, especially with this whole Mist Call and Fading Memories early game. I do like this variant. Some lists will run Thresh. The reason why I'm not is because generally, if I'm being honest, uh, my comfort the way I play decks isn't really suitable for Thresh. I don't know if that really makes sense, but sometimes you just, you have a deck list that works and feels a bit more comfortable, but um, I just don't prefer the, the Thresh, Thresh version right now. Things may change and you could definitely play a version with Thresh and you could definitely take a lot of the things I'm saying today and utilize them in your games, even with a different list. So Mist Call is really cool too because if Malkai dies throughout the early game, you can res him and that is a huge power play. If your opponent invests on a single turn to kill your Malkai, especially against PNZ, then the Mist Call gets really, really crazy. Outside of that, using Mist Call on Jaw Hunters and Dead Blue Mondra is also a bit of a backbreaker in a lot of matchups. Speaking of which, we have three Jaw Hunters, also a great target for fading memories. Trading off uh, mid-range units is pretty good. This can trade into a lot of three and four cost units, so it's really, really strong Jaw Hunters. It kind of does get pinged off by some other decks, like against PNZ and other Shadow Isles lists. You might find Jaw Hunters less valuable, but it doesn't mean it's still not a decent card. Dead Blue Mondere is going to be uh, auto include for any Malkai deck right now, and it's this super strong card. Tosses cards, life steal 3 2, really good target for uh, Mist Call and Fading Memories too if we need. So that's really strong. 3 Bile Feast is a bit of an auto include to help us stabilize the board early, which is what I want this deck to do. 
two thorny toads and three dread drudges that will round out the deck i hope that makes a lot of sense i hope you understand the reasons why i have the cards that i do if you have any other questions please feel free to leave them in the comments i do respond to them very quickly and you guys have been putting a lot of efforts into your comments so thank you so much for that i guess the next thing we want to talk about is the mulligan so for the mulligan, the mulligan is generally going to be the same for almost every matchup. The thing about deep is that in terms of your early game, it's also the early game that helps to boost your win condition quickly because we want to be tossing cards. Some of the best cost cards we have is throughout the early game. So first of all, in almost every matchup, you won't have much of a problem looking for a curve. I mean, if you're fortunate enough to find your one, two and three drops, that is what makes deep feel really oppressive sometimes but outside of that against control decks you probably definitely want to keep maokai in most of your opening hands even if the rest of your hand is kind of slow but other than that pretty much look for your three cost below cards i wouldn't keep miss call in the opening hand though unless i had other units to play alongside it what i mean is like if you have like a maokai miss call fading memories or thorny toad in hand i might kick the miss call it's probably more important that we find stronger units for it but against control, you might argue that Miss Call is pretty good too. You just have to figure out exactly which, what the matchup is. Like against Karma Ezreal, keeping Miss Call is probably going to be super relevant, even if you don't have the units to play right away. Against aggro, Vile Feast is going to help you a lot. Thorny Toad is going to help you a lot. Deadly Mondo is going to help you a lot. Uh, probably against PNZ aggro decks, don't keep the Joel Hunters. You probably won't find much use of it. It will just get pinged off. So you can kick Joel Hunters in most of your PNZ matchups. Maokai is going to help you a lot. Keep it if you find a curve as well, even against aggro. And in terms of that, outside of that, probably don't keep anything above this end. You might argue keeping cards like Grasp of the Undying or Withering Whale if you know specifically what their list is in terms of their aggro deck, because they might help you too. But you'd probably only keep these if you already had like a decent curve, if that makes sense. Because the thing is, you might be tossing some cards too, so you might be tossing these cards. So if you're fortunate enough to find a curve against an aggro deck, consider keeping Grasp or Withering Whale because you don't want to toss these cards. Um, outside of that, I think uh, it's going to be it's going to need to be about the same in every matchup. Look for the curve, and you should have a good time. It's Kawako. I verse a lot of the same people. I love it. This guy's always playing something bilge water and free old. Horrible, but still a win. Still a win. Our deck tech choices helped us out quite a lot. Oh yeah, what a curve. Joel Hunter's splendid against this deck, unless they have, um... Of course, unless they actually run Make It Rain. Pretty good discards. Grass for the Undying, not too useful. Happy to trade this off, denying value from his Sejuani level. Um, yeah, we just, we just play Thorny Toad here. I could always, I could pass as well. What do I get punished by? Yeah, not a lot. Let's play the 1-4. He plays this thing. Alright, so we'll file face this. Definitely. It denies him a proc. And we can take the respectable trades. I guess I want to play Maokai now. Well, there's not really a way for him to clear it. That is a way to clear it. I need to get one proc off on the Maokai. Just one proc. Okay, so we can fear the north the next turn. Actually, I could have... Nah, it's not worth it. Yeah, we should just play this. It's a pretty good find.
Draw hunters on the ephemeral is pretty cool. It doesn't matter whether it's ephemeral or not. And this provides me more sea monsters. A way to go deep might be pretty interesting. He's helping me go deep. Very generous of him. I'm just going to keep his board as under control as possible. This Vile Feast feels okay and it utilizes my mana. Um, I could potentially go for the Missed Call, hoping for a high roll. That is honestly a bit too much of a high roll though. Like it's a 50-50, I find something that sticks or I play another Ephemeral. It's probably not worth it. Whereas next turn I can at least like... Now it's even better. I could just play a big ship recorder. Seems reasonable. Uh, Sejuani can obviously deal with it quite easily. But then again, I could play Miss Call afterwards, so. Depending on how I want to block this turn. Which means I probably just like. Potentially only block with the ship recorder, just to guarantee some sort of weird. But that's probably not correct. I think I'd be happy to see like a ship recorder. Okay, that's fair enough. So he's gonna get a proc off this turn no matter what. Oh boy. I'll take my chances. Yeah, we got Thorny's head. It's a little bit unlucky. We are deep. I think we should just play the treasure trove this turn, right? It's like... <laughs> it could be a really bad play. But it could provide us a shit ton of tempo as well. So we'll see how we go. Give me the treasure. Let's play some Hearthstone. These are decent. Can I do anything with the powder cakes? <laughs> Not really. Okay, I can play a, I can just play yeah. I'm playing a shit ton of units. I think that's like what is the most relevant here. Looking for trouble. It found you. A gift from the river folk. Do I wanna allow him to draw cards? I'm not entirely sure if I do, honestly. This single combat's pretty cool. This double attack means I get to attack something twice. That's a big draw. Oh, I'll make him draw cards, sure thing. Okay, and a side note, I'm getting better at Rogue Company. What is Rogue Company? Is 
So if I play these powder kegs, I allow my target to challenge with the Sejuani. It also gives me a pretty good Vile Feast or even a Grasp of the Undying to be honest as well. Okay, that was lots of fun. Seems like an odd drag that he'd um drag that. Uh, let's go for this grasp. Bruv, what is that, Maccas? It's a new third person shooter. Okay. I'll play LOL later in the evening, I guess. Fair enough. He could he could take a high roll fucking uh make it rain if he wants. I mean if he does do that, I can switch over to like the Vile Feast. If it does land. I don't know how he interacts with the kegs outside of that. Um Yeah, I guess that's okay. So what I think he's about to do here is he's about to play Riptide Rex. So I'm going to pass. Looks like he kind of low rolled here a little bit. I'll hit the Jaw Hunters now so he can't drag my units out of blocking ranges. I just binged two seasons of Stranger Things in the past 24 hours. Well maybe 48, I've lost count. Nice! I've been binge watching Naruto. I think I'm on like episode 130 at the moment roughly. So this is good for us. We get two really good blockers. Uh, next turn we can do a few interesting things. I think we'll have to open up with um, Devour of Depths. I don't know if I can just go kill Breaker on the open. Nuro is too slow for me personally. Yeah, it's a bit slow. I'm running out of animes to watch right now, so um, I'm enjoying it because there's so much of it. I want to unironically. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna offer him a trade here. Imagine if he found the treasure from that. He goes, he still, he yoinks my shipwreck holder. Oh, that would have been nutty. Okay, so the rest of the cards in our deck is just game winning cards. Yeah, Maokai seems okay. Yeah, let's destroy his deck. My friend showed it to me. Shugokeki. You'll be watching the same fight for like seven episodes. It's fair enough. If it's a decent fight, it's okay. But if it's not like a decent fight, then it drags on. And I haven't heard of it though. I like playing Maokai here. It's the best time to play it is the sooner than later. I can still play Devour Depths this turn if I want to. And this block seems okay. Even if he clears it with like Fury of the North, I will survive. I mean, we're pretty cool now. We can just chill, let the game play out. Make sure we don't make any mistakes. Make sure I don't make any mistakes, guys. Mistake number one is probably not being a bit more aggressive here against the tempo deck. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll sacrifice one of my um, Devour Depths now. It's called Food Wars. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I've heard of Food Wars. I've heard of Food Wars. I watched a couple episodes of that a while back. I thought it was pretty funny, the first episode. A little bit, um, a little bit different for my taste, but uh, still pretty interesting. 
Um, yeah, let's just open attack first of all. Actually, hang on. What What is crazy if I play something? What is like ridiculous? I don't think there's much that's ridiculous. Plus I can play Devour Depths. And this gives me a chance of connecting face with the Nautilus. There's a higher chance I can connect a certain amount of damage to his face. Cause I can, I can clean up something with Devourer. Yeah, you're right, Faint. I just, yeah, I'm slowing down my, slowing down my turns now. There's like limited stuff we can do. 